How did Fortnite, a game made for children, accidentally become the hardest and most competitive FPS game ever created? It's a very interesting story and one I obviously really care about. I've been playing Fortnite for over six years and I've been a gamer for way longer than that. I played CSGO, Rocket League, H1Z1, Call of Duty at an extremely high level. Hey, I've been a competitive gamer all my life, but nothing has really come close to Fortnite. Like, this game does, you know, piss me off in a way. Don't get me wrong, there's days where I absolutely despise this game, but I always keep coming back, and it's because the game is so deep, and nothing quite compares to Fortnite. Like, once you play Fortnite, other Battle Royale games just don't really feel the same. So whether you know Fortnite or not, let me explain everything that happened that eventually led to the accidental creation of the hardest game of all time. So Fortnite was initially created by Epic Games back in 2011, a really long time ago, and it initially was just a sandbox survival game. It was basically called Save the World, and you just would, you know, shoot zombies, and the builds that you see today are what you would use to make your fort. Obviously, they had no idea what these builds would be used for in modern era. But yeah, that's what it was used for. You would just hop on and shoot zombies. It was basically a campaign game. There was no multiplayer. But then if you guys remember back in 2016 to 2017, a whole battle royale era was going off in the gaming sphere. Everyone wanted to play battle royales. Every game wanted to be a battle royale. And I think this mainly started with H1Z1, if I remember correctly. Maybe something uh, prior to that, like Daisy. I don't know uh, the specifics of that exactly. But I know it started with H1Z1. At least for me, I loved H1Z1. I think this is what brought a lot of people to the battle royale genre. Like so many of the top Fortnite players of the time were just from H1Z1. Tfue, Ninja, um, you know, a few others I'm forgetting. But yeah, I absolutely loved H1Z1. It was amazing for its time, but it, it spawned the way for other games. So we started seeing games like PUBG. That was a very, very popular. I personally never really liked it. I much preferred H1Z1 over PUBG. But that's besides the point, okay, all these games were blowing up with the battle royale genre, so every single game was like, okay, we need to change our game into a battle royale. Call of Duty did it, which, you know, was never a battle royale. And then you had Fortnite, this random kids game where you shoot at zombies, you know, they're like, okay, let's turn our game into a battle royale. And the rest was history, bro. They had no idea how crazy these Minecraft type mechanics would play into a battle royale, and no one did at the time. Because in 2017, when Fortnite was first released as a battle royale and free to play, uh, it immediately got a lot of players. Millions of people were flocking to it. And I remember at the time, I was a Call of Duty player, bro. People were like, yo, hop on Fortnite, hop on Fortnite. My friends were saying, hop on Fortnite. And I'm like, nah, all right, I'm competing in Call of Duty. I'm taking this seriously, all right? I'm not playing this little game. But eventually, I, I tried out Fortnite. And I'm not going to lie, the first few games, I I honestly didn't really like it that much. The building was so weird, it was so hard, and it was so foreign to what I've been used to. And I think it's because, you know, Fortnite has a kind of high barrier to entry, especially when you're going against people who know what they're doing, and you don't, you just feel completely lost. And here I am, a competitive gamer, which usually whatever game I hopped on, I'm just dominating everyone, like, almost instantly, just because aim carries over between FPS games. But not Fortnite, okay? This game was different. I wasn't hopping on and I wasn't dominating because I, I just couldn't, I, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know where people were, you know, going to with their builds. I knew nothing, bro. And yeah, it was pretty daunting. So I went back to Call of Duty. But something about this game just kept calling back to me. And, you know, I eventually played it a few more times and played it a few more times. You know, I was never really impressed by it. But I remember I was on vacation one week and, you know, I was bored at one point and all I could do was watch some streams while everyone was like asleep or something. And I watched this player called Myth, okay, who, if you know anything about Fortnite, you know who Myth is. He was the undisputed number one Fortnite player back in the day, back in the OG days. He was really good at building before anyone else was. And I was watching this dude and I was just blown away. It made me completely realize what you could achieve in this game. And I was like, hold on, this is actually sick. So I made a promise to myself when I got back from vacation, I was gonna play Fortnite and grind at it and get good. So I'm getting a little off topic with my personal experience, but at this point in time, people weren't very good at the game yet. Uh, like, you know, compared to someone like me, Myth was amazing. 
But compared to people now, like he is absolutely trash. And I think a lot of people enjoyed this era of Fortnite because that skill gap was still there, but it wasn't extreme to the point where it is today, where like, you know, a, a pro could take on 20 noobs right now. Easy. You know, because basically all you were doing back in the day was ramping to get high ground over someone or cranking like a 180 a few times and then just being above them. There was no crazy edit plays. There was no peace control or boxing anyone, nothing of that kind. Uh, and like I said, I think a lot of people preferred this era of Fortnite, which will never return again. But, you know, that was the beauty of the game because everyone was learning this game for the first time. No one had ever seen anything like this except for like in Minecraft. So having this concept of being able to build in a battle royale was just crazy to everyone. And it was really fun. And I'm going to talk more about the building aspect later on in this video and why it's so, you know, advanced and complex, which I think, you know, allows the game to be as deep as it is. But yeah, that was the extent. I mean, it was basically a battle royale with a few builds uh, thrown in there if you were really good at building. And what's funny is, you know, there was no playground and there was no creative, which meant you couldn't practice unless you were someone like me. OK, me and my friend used to land Moisty Meyer farm up all the wood and then build fight. OK, that's how dedicated we were back in the day. We, we had to do what we had to do to get some practice to play against some good players. But 2018, everything started to change for the game. OK, it started to go from this game that was, you know, just really cool with the public um, and casual fan base. And it started to get way, way more sweaty because in 2018, three things were added. OK, first turbo build was added which if you don't know what turbo build was basically back in the day you had to individually click every single build so if you wanted to put a wall you had to click put a ramp click put a floor click but nowadays you just hold down the mouse button or the trigger button on your controller and then you just take out the builds and it just places so you don't have to individually click for every single build so i don't think i have to go too much into detail here this exploded the skill ceiling eventually because you can just build way faster this way, obviously. And not only that, they added a, a mode called Playground, which wasn't as good as Creative yet, but it was still a very good way to practice. This was the way a lot of pros and high level players would practice, but you would have to go into Playground, farm all of the mats, get them um, all where you want them, put them in little boxes, and then you can 1v1. But yeah, this was a much better way to practice. And then people were really starting to improve in 1v1s. They were learning how to 90. And just the whole build fighting meta was exploding at this point. So if you weren't practicing, if you weren't practicing your builds in playground and stuff like that, you were quickly getting left behind. And especially if you're a new player to the game, I mean, you were just getting destroyed now at this point. And then at the very end of this year, they're about to add something that completely changes the game forever. But I think at this point, a lot of people were starting to, you know, not enjoy Fortnite as much. Oh, it's too sweaty. Oh, it's too hard. You know, there was a big pendulum swing and just you know, kind of shitting on the game because it's too much, which is definitely fair. Like games can be too hard to get into, but I think that's the beauty of Fortnite because it's actually like not too hard to get into. Yeah. If you're going against a pro and you just picked up the, the game for the first time, well, you kind of should get bodied by them. That's not really a good indicator of a good game. If there's no skill gap at all between the two, between someone who's practiced for years and someone who just picked up the game. Might as well be playing some rock, paper, scissors, okay? That the game will have no depth. But like I said, I obviously understand where these memes and the, you know, not wanting to get into Fortnite came from. I really do. Like I said, when I first got into the game, it was overwhelming for me. So I can't even like fathom getting into the game now and going against sweats. You just simply can't do that. You got to play with people your own skill level. And when you do, I mean, the game's not that hard and it's fun. It's actually pretty easy to get, in, get into. You know, it's not like Dota 2 or Starcraft where you need to know like a million things like this is a relatively easy game to get into. And then they added creative mode. And, you know, this only made the skill gap get way, way bigger because people could curate their practice, create practice maps, just have infinite mats always and just crank and crank and crank. And then you got people spending all day in creative just practicing their builds. And yeah, the skill gap exploded yet again. People got insanely, insanely good. And that has not stopped since 2018. It has been, what, six years since then? And people are still, like, it is still getting pushed to this very day. And I think that just shows, like, how amazing Fortnite is and how amazing uh, the mechanics of the game are. Which is getting me into why Fortnite 
is the hardest game or is the hardest FPS game ever made, which I think, you know, serves it to be a good game. I don't think that's a downside at all, which a lot of people, like I said, think about it as. That's not a downside. That's actually the thing that keeps it going, in my opinion. The, the deep mechanical, I don't even know what to call it. The complexity of the game. There's so many things. There's so many things to learn. There's so many new metas to to learn about. And like, this is something we've never seen in, in an FPS game before, especially a battle royale. Because like I said, I came from a game like Call of Duty or, you know, CSGO I played for a long time, um, H1Z1. And in a lot of those games, the cap uh, of how good you can be, it, it, it kind of stops at a certain point because your aim can only be so good, your positioning can only be so good, and your movement can only be so good. Like, yeah, you have stuff like in like cars in H1Z1 where you can maneuver around the car or in CSGO, you got flashbang smoke, stuff like that and use your utility well, but nothing. And I mean, nothing comes close to building in Fortnite, bro, because I, the best way I can explain this is that that makes Fortnite so awesome to so many people and so many good players is think about Warzone. OK, I tried to get into Warzone for a while. I just couldn't. I didn't enjoy the game. And like I said, I came from Call of Duty. Call of Duty was my main game for like seven years. OK, I loved it. But the Battle Royale just doesn't come close to Fortnite, man. You know, I think games like Apex Legends do a better uh, for this uh, specific reason. So let me get to that example. If you are in Call of Duty, if you're in Warzone and you walk out into the open and there's someone in a window or just looking into that field, you're done for, dude. There's nothing you can do. You're done. So basically, you just have to hide. You have to hide behind things. You have to stay behind cover. And, you know, you're going to have boomers in the comments like, oh, that's that's the real, you know, difficulty in a game positioning. But it's like, no, it's not. It just really limits what you can do. And you pretty much just need to hide the entire game if you want to stay alive. Don't get me wrong, I am not saying there isn't a skill gap to Warzone. I, I know the shields, um, you know, maneuvering around buildings, stuff like that. But the reality is, if the zone pushes you out into a field and someone's watching it, you're done. You're done for. So the zone dictates so much in that game and positioning dictates so much in that game. So if someone way below your skill level catches you in a bad spot, you're done. doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter how good you are. You're not going to be able to finesse that situation. Whereas with Fortnite... Unless you're getting headshot sniped or something, you could be out in the open. Someone could spray at you. Boom, you build, you have cover instantly. OK, it's not about catching someone lacking in a situation. It's about outskilling them after the fact. And again, you're going to have people complaining that, oh, that's not skill. But let's be honest, that's just that's just copium. Positioning is a skill even in Fortnite. OK, like, yes, it may be a little bit more important in Warzone, but Getting good positioning, especially in competitive games, is crucial in Fortnite as well. But that's the, besides the point, okay? We've never seen a game where you could just be out in the open, no matter where the situation, if you're better than the person, you're gonna beat them. Another example I have for this is um, just say a normal Call of Duty lobby. Drop a prone to a Call of Duty lobby, he's still gonna die like 20, 30 times, unless he's camping extremely hard. Because that's just the way the game goes. You The, the time to kill is extremely quick, a few bullets, boom, they're dead. So if you go against two players and you're a pro, you just can't take them on at the same time unless you're playing angles really well and stuff like that. My point is the skill gap isn't anywhere near as big as it is in Fortnite. Whereas you take a good player, put him against two lesser players, he can build, he can straight build it what he wants, take crazy angles that he uh, curates himself with building and editing. And dude, like you can't even fathom the complexity of this game without playing it over and over and over and like seeing it for yourself. And you know, I could sit here and get into the details of why building is so crazy on its own. Like everything you could do to take right or correct angles and, you know, take peaks as optimally as possible. So the opponent has as little opportunity to shoot you back as possible. Like these are all things that are just continually, continually growing in the game. Like I said, it's six years later and things are still improving. People are finding better angles, better ways to engage in situations. Whereas with Call of Duty, it's like, oh, I should have just, uh, you know, hit more shots. Fortnite, there's always like 17 different things you could have done and you need to evaluate all of them in real time, milliseconds, you know, it's a crazy game. 
And of course, we have all these weapons and stuff like that that they add to the game to make it easier for noobs. And they have to do that. That like that's how crazy Fortnite is. They need to add these weapons into the game so that people can take out good players. Like I keep saying, people think of that as a bad thing. It's not. You want a game to have a big skill gap. Otherwise, what's the point of grinding a game? If you just grind a game and stay the same skill, well, I mean, that's not fun. There's no improvement. There's no growth. There's no progress. Why would you ever just do something for nothing? So in a game like Call of Duty, where yes, there is a little bit of growth. Oh, you could position a tiny bit better, or you could play with your teammate a tiny bit better, or just aim a tiny bit better. Fortnite, there's these big complex uh, situations where it's like you could definitely improve upon this and it's going to keep happening for the next 10 years we're not even close to the ceiling yet peace control is going to get better things are going to get better people are going to get better teamwork's going to get better there's so much to improve on still and the game is already as complex as it is like like i can't explain to you how weird it is that you could just go into creative not even play anyone and just mess around with builds and that's fun on its own just learning the mechanics of the game and solidifying the mechanics in the game is fun on its own and challenging so when you combine that with battle royale and going against other players it's just the perfect recipe dude and i always say this epic games just magically stumbled upon the perfect formula like combining battle royale and minecraft almost it was just a beautiful accident and I'm also a, uh, someone who played Smash Bros. Melee quite a bit, which is also a similar, um, you know, situation if you know much about that. Like it was just a kid's party game and it turned out to be like one of the most competitive games ever. And this is exactly Fortnite, dude. Just a, a beautiful accident that gave players the tools to just improve upon anyone's imagination and just destroy battle royale lobbies in the craziest way consistently like it's not crazy to see a really good uh fortnite player just hop into a game drop a 20 bomb do it again drop a 20 bomb the next game because they can consistently outplay people they're better than in call of duty you get caught lacking one time you're done <laughs> like there's not enough counterplay and that's why i like games like you know apex legends where you have those abilities there is counterplay to those situations like, don't get me wrong, you know, camping does help in Fortnite as well, catching people off guard and getting the initial damage, but it it doesn't completely destroy your game, like in Call of Duty or PUBG or something like that, where you get caught in the open, you're dead. Fortnite, you get caught in the open, okay, I'm going to build, I'm going to do what I do, and now you're going to regret shooting me because I'm way better than you and I'm going to come smack you up. That's the beauty of Fortnite. There's just, it's just such a deep game, man. That is the crazy way fortnite became such a hard game and why so many people love playing it competitively anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this uh more rant just me talking about fortnite i don't know i just kind of thought about you know making a video like this i have some other ideas like this but uh yeah 